Well, I'll, I'll start by asking, were you aware of, of Dido's story before getting involved in this project? Not really. I mean, I don't think that her story was, wasn't common knowledge to me growing up, but I was first introduced to um, the idea of the painting um, by Damien Jones, the producer, at, almost seven years ago um, when I met him for a completely different project. And um, he said he was thinking about maybe producing a film about Dido, but that, you know, there wasn't a script or anything at that stage. And, and so I, I came here and tried to find the painting, but realised it was up in Scotland. So I was able to get a postcard of, of the painting from the gift shop. So that was really the main thing that I had um, to know about Dido. Um, and then, you know, several years went by and the scripts sort of came into, into being. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really know anything about her beyond the painting. So... Th- Knowing so little about her, do you think that actually allowed you quite a lot of freedom? Or was that a freedom that you quite enjoyed having? Oh, absolutely. I think that, you know, obviously once we had a, a script to work on and a very detailed and nuanced script, and Amma had such a sort of um, strong vision for the piece, um, that was really, you know, something to kind of hang on to. But, um, you know, for me, it's great to have that imaginative journey as well. Uh, and I think, you know, to have that artistic freedom to create the character. Um, and, I, you know, even though she really existed, and um, you know, I really felt like I wanted to make her as, as much of a living, breathing human being as possible. So I did feel quite a responsibility uh, with that. But, you know, it's, it's nice in a way because people don't know her, so they're not comparing you. It's not like she lived very recently, <laughs> so people can't compare. You know, you're, people are able to kind of suspend their disbelief and hopefully go with you on the story. And of course, the story was set a couple of hundred years ago, and thankfully times have changed a little bit since mm-hmm. then. Um, but were you still able to, to find comparisons between yourself and Dido and sort of try and relate to her in any way? Oh, my gosh, yeah. You know, I relate to her on so many levels and I think that, you know, it's such a, a nuanced story and, and, and her evolution from girlhood to womanhood is, is really, you know, well plotted, I feel. And, and, and for me, I really related to her on, on, on um, the idea of, of where she ends up in the story, which is that she ends up, you know, as a woman who is, you know, comfortable in her own skin and, you know, able to sort of be her authentic self. And I think that that's something that I aspire to do, um, you know, in my daily life when possible. Um, and I think it's just an inspiring message, you know, for women in general today. Well, I mean, to, to say there aren't enough sort of leading, strong leading female roles in, in cinema is an understatement. And the, the same applies to, to black leading roles as well. So this must have been a real joy to get a role that, like, like this that has this amount of magnitude behind it as well. Absolutely, you know, and, and, you know, Dido is, you know, a really sort of layered character. And I think, you know, what was so refreshing to me was that, you know, to have a woman of mixed race in the lead of a period drama and not playing a slave, not being brutalised or in a subservient role, but actually playing this, you know, relatively articulate, um, you know, woman who's been brought up in this genteel society. I think that was really refreshing and um, and new and um, and for me on a personal level just gave me so much more to get my teeth into and I read that you were attached to this project for about seven years or so is that is that the well case? I, I wasn't attached to it I, I first heard about it seven years ago I guess mm. I attached my heart to it but um, I wasn't officially attached to it uh, I still auditioned like everybody else um, but I just knew about it and I held on to the postcard um, and I think that 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 the, the uh, producer was was trying to get the project off the ground for a long time and it was difficult to get funding for the project um, because for all the reasons that we think it's great I think people were scared of it yeah. as well you know because it hadn't been done before and also um, I think that you know for me I was doing so many other things uh, you know and I think sometimes the stars have to align <laughs> you yeah. know for something to kind of come together so I feel like it did happen at the right time in the end. I'm really fascinated by this idea of just having a a painting and then delving into a kind of story behind it. Mm. And I was wondering, is there any other pieces of art or paintings that you've ever stumbled across that you'd love to to explore further and find a kind of point behind it? Oh gosh, that's really interesting that you say that. Not so much, I mean, you know, not yet. I'll keep my eye out. I know I played Ophelia and, and I've had long been fascinated. One of my other favorite paintings is, is a, a Millet painting of Ophelia that, you know, used to hang up in my, my room when I was a, you know, a teenager. And then I ended up playing Ophelia. So it's funny, it seems to be if I sort of get the postcard and put it up in my room, eventually <laughs> a few years later, I get to play the character. And that's what happened with Ophelia and with Belle. So, um, so 
we'll see. But um, I'll have to keep my eye out for other paintings that would inspire something. But of course, next up, we're seeing you in Jupiter Ascending, which is very exciting. Uh, I mean, coming out so soon after Bell, this must be quite an exciting time for you. You know what? Jupiter Ascending is actually now coming out in February. So, um, yeah, the next thing that I have coming out is a film called Blackbird, which comes out in November, in, in the US at least. Um, and that really is exciting because I'm playing um, a pop star in that film. Uh, so it's very, very contemporary and I'm singing and dancing and, and you know, doing lots of very sort of uh, contemporary things and singing in the music studio and stuff. Um, and that really is exciting because it's such a contrast to Belle. Um, and, and, and that for me was kind of the reason that I did it, to be able to kind of go from a period drama world to a very contemporary pop world so that, you know, hopefully I don't get bored and, and people don't get bored of me. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.